What is going on guys and welcome back to another bourbon of the week. This week we are bringing you Rabbit Hole Derringer. Now this is one of two things that I do not like about bourbons personally. Now if you like finished bourbons, if you like weeded bourbons, stick around. This episode is going to be for you because we're going to find out if Rabbit Hole can take over the weeded world with a finished bourbon. Everybody knows before we get started, time for the traditional sip. It's going to be different. So here we have it. This is the Rabbit Hole Derringer, and this bottle is going to be an iffy one for me because it has three things that I don't love about bourbons all combined into this bottle here. Now, we already did the high gold, and that one was absolutely fantastic. I think it came in right under eight, like a 7.93, 7.95. But let me tell you off the bat, before we get into this bottle, I love everything that Rabbit Hole is doing as a distillery. They've got an awesome social media presence. They respond to emails. They respond to questions everything like that. They're very upfront on their website about what they're doing, where they're doing it, a lot about their mash bills and everything that you need to know is right on there as well. So they actually tell you the mash bill right on this one. This one they don't tell you, but it is on the website. 68% corn, 18% wheat, which leaves us with 14% of the malted barley. So as you can already tell, that's the first thing I can tell you I don't love about bourbon. Not this one in particular, but I'm not the biggest weeded fan when it comes to the Larcenies, the Rebel Yells, all that kind of stuff. The Wellers, which we've done before. They're just not my cup of tea. I understand why people like the wheat over the rye because it doesn't offer as much spice, but I'm definitely a high rye guy. I'm definitely a rye bourbon, rye bourbon guy. High rye bourbon or even just a rye guy in general. We've got a couple of ryes up here behind me. Another video that we're going to have coming soon. Thanks to the Black Bourbon family, Jason and Brandy. Make sure you check them out. Five ryes that you need. But as for this one, that's number one. This is a weeded bourbon. Number two, right here on the side, it says twice finished in our toasted and charred American oak barrels. So this is a toasted bourbon as well. Now, I didn't know this was toasted when I first picked it up, which kind of leads me to believe this is one of probably the first toasted barrels. I don't know exactly when they got the Derringer to come out, but you're talking about Elijah Craig toasted. I didn't like it that much. You're talking about Basil Hayden toast. I didn't like it that much. So we have a weeded bourbon, we have a toasted bourbon, and last but not least, this is finished in Pedro Jimenez sherry casks. So this is also a finished bourbon, which is not my favorite as well. We've tried the Thomas S. Moore, which is finished in Chardonnay casks. We've done a couple others that are finished as well, and they're just not that great. Now the one that did get it right when it comes to finishing is the Joseph Magnus triple cask finish. That one definitely presented a flavor profile that I loved. So maybe this one can do that too. Maybe this one can break the barrier with all three of these and still make this the, the type of bourbon that I can enjoy. So with all that information, let's get into our three categories here. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. We're on the way to 1,000 subscribers. We're actually in a competition with another channel, Straight Up Bourbon, to see who can get to 1,000 first. And I think we're only like 40-ish away by the time this drops. So make sure you click that subscribe button to help us get there. Trying to get there before my birthday, September 7th, when we're going to do a live stream and pop this old Fitzgerald bottled and bond eight year that I just got. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. I appreciate that a lot. Let's get back into this. First category is drinkability. This talks about how smooth it is, how easy it is to drink this bottle. Now this comes in at 93 proof, which isn't too terribly high, but it's also, it's not too terribly low either. You know, it's not an 80 proof bourbon. So when you drink this, I would expect some kick. Now in previous bottles that I've drank that are cask finished and, and a lot of these, um, this is sherry cask, so wine cask finish. It usually offers a little bit sweeter of a note. Then you mix that with the weeded bourbon, that's definitely gonna offer you a little bit sweeter of a note. So there's no real spice when it comes to this, at least I wouldn't think when it comes to the kick on this. So everything that I get spice wise is, I think gonna be an ethanol kick, but I've only, take, I've only had one sip, so let's take one more before we give any type of description on how well this actually drinks. So as I suspected, this doesn't drink hot at all. There's no real Kentucky hug on this. There's no real burn on this. We're gonna get into flavor in a little bit, but you can definitely tell that that sherry cask stands out in this very much so that it takes away from all of that ethanol kick. Now don't get me wrong, it's still 93 proof. So if you're just sipping 80 proof bourbons and you want something that tastes like Basil Hayden's where it's straight water, it's delicious, it's smooth, this isn't what you're gonna get. This does have a little bit of a kick to it, but for a 93 proof, I don't think it has anything ridiculous when it comes to the flavor or when it comes to the kick on this when it comes to that ethanol kick at least this is very easy to drink for a 93 proof bourbon it's actually a little bit under 93 i would say maybe in that 90 85 range even that i think this would drink like so blind taste test i would say maybe like an 85 to 90 and to come in at 93 that's not a bad spot at all 
So let's give this a pretty good score when it comes to drinkability. I'm going to give it like an 8.8 .8 when it comes to drinkability on this, just because you really don't get any of that ethanol kick. A slight kick at the very beginning, but it, it's gone by the time you get to the flavors on this. 8.8 is where we're going to put this on drinkability. So up next, that's going to get us into taste on this. And this is where I was very afraid for this bourbon, because again, we're going to talk about the three things that I don't like. We're going to talk about toasted. We're going to talk about the finish. We're going to talk about wheat. What do I not like about weeded bourbon? So we've had this nosing kit. Where is it? One sec. So we got our nosing kit and one of the grains in here is obviously wheat. And something about this, it's definitely a lot sweeter than the rye. You don't get a lot of spice when it comes to this, but it just doesn't give you any type of, I don't know what the flavor is. It's wheat that I'm getting, but it's just not as good as a rye spice to me when it comes to bourbon. It's very sweet. Um, it doesn't allow it to really get into the next flavor profile, but for this one, it's a little bit different. So this one, the wheat stands out, but it isn't overwhelming. So I don't hate the wheat on this, but what I do not like is the, sh the sherry finish. It's just not for me. I'm not a wine drinker. You probably already know this. You can see my wine rack over here has been filled, not moved, especially now that Marissa's pregnant. She's not drinking any of it. The sherry finish on this is what I personally don't like. You get a lot of that wine flavor, that grape, maybe like a little bit of like a walnut. I don't know if that's a sherry cask, but it's like very, it's very in, in your face. It's very forward. Now, if you like a sherry cask finish, if you've had a sherry cask finished bourbon and you've enjoyed it, I can guarantee you that you would love this bourbon because that sherry cask stands out. Like I can't even pick out anything other than the sherry casks when it comes to this. You're getting a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of dryness on the end, but other than that, like that very fruity, whiny, grapey flavor profile, you can't even really tell that it's a weeded bourbon, to be honest with you. It's just overwhelming with that. And again, it doesn't tell you how long it stays in those sherry casks for, but it's definitely in there long enough that you can tell. Now this is never chill filtered, so it's not gonna pull any of those flavors out of there. And at 93 proof, I think they keep it high enough that they're not gonna water down the flavor profile. I think this is a fantastic bourbon if you like sherry cast finished weeded bourbons. I feel like that's a very specific niche market, but at the same time, if it's there, this is the bottle for you. Now, my personal preference, I don't wanna not like this. I don't wanna give it a terrible score just because it's not my favorite, my favorite flavor profile. I think it deserves to have a pretty good score, but at the same time, I'm not just gonna give it a better score than some of the other bourbons that I don't like and be like, well, somebody would like it, so it deserves to have a great score. I'm not gonna do that because I like to hold myself honest to my own personal opinions, but I also want you to know that this is only a personal opinion on a weeded, to the toasted, we didn't even get into the toasted. I don't really get, just jumped out at me. I don't really get a lot of toasted on here. The toasted doesn't really do too much. The weeded keeps it a lot less spicy than it would otherwise if it was a if it was a rye. And then the sherry cask definitely gives it that flavor as far as that grapey, um, walnutty, whiny taste. So that's what you've got here. Vanilla as well. Definitely get vanilla if you really wanted to. If, if we're this far into the bourbon journey and we don't know that there's going to be vanilla, there's definitely vanilla. But definitely that wine cask and that's about it. As for taste on this, I'm going to give it my personal score. And again, it's my personal score here. 6.5 when it comes to the taste on this. It's just not my favorite when it comes to those three things. You're putting three things together that I don't like. So take it with a grain of salt. And last but certainly not least, that's going to get us into price on this. And this MSRP is at $80. And stop, please, before you start saying here comes another terrible score on price because it's over $50. Let's talk about it. And I've started to try to be more reasonable about my price assessments on bottles. One, they're a newer startup. Now, my understanding, at least when I researched the High Gold, is that they weren't distilling their own product in their own location, but they were distilling their own product. From my understanding, Rabbit Hole was renting out space and distilling their own product. Now, is that the same as sourcing your bourbon? I don't think so. They've hired somebody to distill their bourbon. They just happen to be doing it at a location that has all the equipment ready for use. Now, I don't know if that's true for the Derringer. I don't know if it's sourced for the Derringer and then they just finish it and bottle it because all it says on here is bottled by bottled by Rabbit Hole Distillery, Louisville, Kentucky. Now, I've also heard when I did the High Gold that in 2018, they started production on their own distillery and started producing their own, uh, their own bourbon. So three-year-old bourbons-ish. That means that this should be out by 2021. Now, this is an older bottle, so it's obviously 2021 now, but they should soon, soon start rolling out their own bourbon in their own location. That's not, what, that's not what I have here. This is an older bottle. 
So this is either a sourced bourbon or it's their own stuff just coming out of another distillery's location. That being said, this is an $80, $80 bottle of bourbon, but it's toasted. We already know that that's going to add a little bit of age to it, which is going to give a second barrel as well. This is actually, this is triple cask finish now. Does that count? You got the original charred oak, you got the toasted barrel, and then you've got the the PX casks. So there's three different, There's they're putting these in three different barrels. That's going to raise the price that alone. Two, they're a younger distillery, so they obviously have to get some inventory and some money behind them. So that's going to raise their prices. They're not going to be able to compete with the Jim Beams and the wild turkeys of the world. Three, it's the third cask. It's finished. So that's going to raise the price. But then wheat, obviously, over rye is going to bring the price down a little bit. I still believe, personally, that $80 is a tough ask for this, but I don't think it's out of the question. At least it's not an 80-proof bourbon like Jim Beam keeps putting out with the Basil Hayden throwing a different label on it and calling it bourbon. This one at $80, I think it's a little high. I could see that $60 range. I think at $60, I would still say it's a little high, but I understand why. $80 just seems to be a step above that, which seems to be out of my range when it comes to this particular bottle. Personally, because I don't like this particular bottle, taste-wise. Love Rabbit Hole, love the High Gold. This particular one is not for me. I'm going to give this like a 7.2 just because I want to be a little nice to them because I love them. 7.2 when it comes to price. So it's at this point that I normally send it over to this week's Barbie Bomb of the Week and teach you a little bit more about this bottle right here. But we've already learned about toasted. We've already learned about cask finish. We've already learned about rabbit hole. and We've already learned about weeded bourbons. So what else is there really to learn? So I'm just going to get right to our score here, which is a 7.47, which is not a terrible spot for a bottle of bourbon that I should have no liking for at all. This is three things that I don't like about bourbon and they put it together well enough, balanced it well enough that I do enjoy it enough to at least keep it on my shelf and I will be pouring more of this as the night goes on. But at a 7.47, it's definitely not at the top of the list, definitely not at the bottom of the list. If you love Sherry Cast Finish, you should try this bottle of bourbon. And if you love Rabbit Hole, make sure you check out the rest of their lineup. They have a Cave Hill, they have a 95% rye, and they also have a four grain. Make sure you check them out as well. Hoping to get my hands on them soon. But that's going to be it for today. Make sure you check me out on Instagram at Bourbon of the Week. Every Tuesday at 4 p.m., we drop an image of the bourbon that we're going to review. You can go on and try and guess my score if you're the closest. You'll get a shout out on the channel as well as entered in a monthly drawing to win some cool prizes, including custom Glen Karens. Make sure you click that subscribe button and that like button. We're on the road to 1000 and trying to beat straight up bourbon. And last but not least, make sure you join me on September 7th, my birthday, going to be 31, where we are going to crack open and do a live review of this old Fitzgerald bottled and bond eight year bourbon, and hopefully be celebrating not only my birthday, but my 1000 subscriber mark. But that's going to be it. Make sure you stay healthy, stay happy, stay drinking. Cheers, y'all. It's dry.